Welcome guys. Uh, today we want to learn a little bit about topography and why it is so important in design. Uh, we're going to learn also uh, mainly about how to identify uh, different types of uh, fonts and families uh, during this process. So in these 12 slides uh, that I've got, I'll be doing some drawing uh, as well as talking. So please uh, be patient. I won't always be looking at the camera uh, because I can't look at the camera and the slide at the same time, obviously. So uh, topography is the art and design of uh, letter forms. Uh, each letter is a symbol and we associate that symbol with a sound. When we combine those sounds, we get words and so on. And you learned how to interpret these symbols when you were a little kid, first learning how to read. Uh, and of course, with every um, culture, every uh, country, there's a different set of symbols that uh, they learn to read with uh, that fits with their language. The uh, symbols uh, have developed uh, over centuries, uh, clear back to uh, ancient uh, times when they were using reeds uh, to uh, stamp uh, symbols into clay in combination of these different um, triangle shapes from the reed would represent uh, different types of accounting uh, figures, numbers, and letters. All right, so a couple of things that we need to start off with in uh, topography is uh, the first thing we have is the baseline. This is the line that everything sits on. Um, so when you were in uh, elementary school and you were learning how to write, it looked an awful lot like, make sure I get this, so you had these, these uh, lines set up that you could practice writing. So this bottom line that you would write on, this is your baseline. All right, and then this top line here, this is your cap height. Right? That's how tall, uh, as a kid, you would know to make your capital letters. And so in this example here, our cap height is right there. You'll also know that there's a sec second line here. And in this particular typeface, uh, they are nearly the same. I think this um, stem on the H is a little bit taller uh, than the T, but this here is known as the ascender line. Okay. Um, the middle dashed line here, which is right through here, is your X height. This is the height of your lowercase letters. Um, with lowercase letters, uh, they will not, this um, X height is not necessarily uh, exactly in the center. It all depends on the typeface. Um, and they determine that type, uh, that X height from the letter X. That's why it's called an X height. Um, now, any letter that extends above this X height line is an ascender. Okay, so uh, lowercase letters B, H, uh, D, uh, lowercase um, T, lowercase L, uh, those all have A senders. Now, any part of a lowercase letter that extends 
below any stem, a stem is a straight line that extends below the baseline is a descender. So y, p, uh, what else, lowercase j, q, g, those are all descenders because they descend below, whereas these letters, they ascend above. Now, I've already mentioned stem. This is a any type of a stroke uh, within a letter form. On the T, any line that goes across, that's a bar. Okay. Um, inside, the space inside of a letter form, whether it's a circle or like inside the uh, a, or even if it's not closed, those are counters. Okay. Now, uh, a circuit or a curved line is a bowl, like a cereal bowl. And you'll notice here on the G, how it has that little extra line. That is an ear. When we terminate a line such as on the R here, that is a terminal. Now, you'll notice here, there, there, down here, you see that's a terminal. But there, there, these things are called uh, serifs. A serif is a, it's a decorative function. Uh, in the original uh, designing of type, they were trying to mimic um, calligraphy, uh, pen strokes. And so that's why we have these things that are called serifs. Now, serifs are still used today, especially in novels and textbooks, uh, little kids' books, because that serif there helps to establish the baseline, which makes it easier for beginning readers to uh, read a body of text. Um, and uh, these serifs, the style of the serif, helps, to, uh, helps us to identify different types of families within uh, the topography world. All right, let's go to our next slide. All right, we always talk about fonts. You guys, um, when you're typing a paper, you'll ask your teacher. Your teacher will tell you what font you can use. And then what we're going to learn are families, specifically typeface, families. So fonts, this is the name of the font, universe, or actually the name of the typeface is universe. The font is within it. So universe 45 light is one font, while universe 39, or sorry, universe 46 light oblique is a different font, or universe 55 roman or universe 56 Roman, the, each one, even if we took out the numbers, okay, those are different, um, oh, I know what the number's for. That number is the measurement for how large that typeface is. So 12 point font, this is 45 point font. So universe light and universe light oblique which just means that it is uh, italicized, are different fonts. Universe bold and universe black right here are different fonts. Universe is the name of the typeface. And then we have typeface families. So there are six main typeface families. I've only got five listed here. 
The third one is decorative. And decorative can be split, well, not into three, into two. Script and cursive. But they're still part of the decorative family. So old style, you see that reaches clear back to 1615. Whereas transitional, this is when we start transitioning from that old style, which is very clunky. Uh, and they were coming up with uh, thinner uh, typefaces, which means that you're using less ink, which means that a publisher or a printer will save money on the cost of ink. They can charge the same amount and uh, uh, use less ink, and that gives them a, a, a higher profit of margin. That was one of the reasons for changing from old style to transitional or modern or any of these. And there are other reasons why, uh, a lot of them, uh, and most of them dealing with uh, design choices. So uh, we're going to go through and we're going to talk about these different families and how you can identify each family. Uh, you will, after you view this video, you'll take a short quiz where you will need to be able to identify the different families. Now, right here, so this is the family, and this, so this is the family, and this is the typeface. And then if we said it was Garamond Bold, that would be the font. And there are three basic fonts within each typeface. Bold, Italic, and Regular. Sorry. All right. So those are the three main fonts to nearly every typeface, except for decorative. Decorative uh, may or may not have these uh, different fonts within the typeface. So let's start with old style. Old style is a serif font. So you need to remember that it has a serif. Uh, these are no, I will refer to these as feet or doohickeys. Okay? But they extend off of the serif. Now on old style, you see this little curved area right there. Let me get my red pointer. That curved area, that is a bracket. So the bracket connects the serif to the stem or bar. Remember, this is a bar. Okay. So if we if we look closely here, you'll see that it is a curved line. Think of a shelf on a wall. Here's my wall. Here's my shelf. Okay, and I'm going to put, I don't know, here's my little pot on the shelf. Okay, I need to connect that shelf to the wall. And so with old style, you're using really thick, chunky serifs and really thick, chunky brackets. Let me erase a little bit of that. The end result is it's functional, right? Imagine this is a 2 by 4 Okay, those of you who know what that is, this is a 2x4 with a big old bracket underneath. It's not 
Um, it's not sexy, it's not cool, um, but it's very functional. So that's one of the advantages to using old style typefaces. It's functional. And if all you need is something that is easy to read, then this will do the job for you. Uh, you'll also notice, so you're going to have your serifs. It has serifs and brackets. And the serif, well, let me back up. The serif and sorry, the serif and bracket are chunky. All right. Uh, so short and chunky, uh, kind of thick. Uh, everything that you would use to describe chunky. All right. Uh, another thing with uh, old style typeface is called oblique. So if we look at the G here, and I wish I could zoom in. Let me try. No, that's not helping us. So. Yeah. So if we are looking at this G, you'll notice that the thinnest parts are at an angle, and that's what oblique is. It's those thin parts are seen at an angle. So, uh, it's really easy to see on the letter O, but I don't have the letter O there, so we just have to make do with the letter G. So you, it doesn't magnify it much, but you can kind of see where it's at an angle. So old style uses uh, an oblique um, design to it. And then another thing to help you with your uh, old style design is, um, or old style typeface, is uh, this top serif on your P, your lowercase t, and H, and N, and R's. You'll see how that top serif is really thick, or that bracket is really thick, and the serif is extra short. Okay. Uh, they also have they're more humanist in design, which is a weird word. It just means that it resembles handwriting. doesn't have a machine look to it or a computer look to it, these curves and, and so forth on the serifs. All right, our next typeface family. Okay, our next typeface family is sans serif. Sans is French for without. So this typeface is probably the easiest to identify. It literally means without serif. You'll see here in uh, the example, uh, the I has no serif. So the only rule to remember here, why am I struggling here? is no serif. Let's turn that out here. No serifs. Remember, serifs are those doohickeys or feet 
at the end of stems or bars. And we don't have any. That's the only thing you need to know about SARS. Now, if you go into college and you study design uh, and you take some topography classes, you're going to learn that there are several categories uh, or ways to identify uh, sans serif type faces. We don't care about those. We're going to make it really simple. No serifs. Okay, now we get into the fun typefaces. These are your decorative typefaces. So here is one that's uh, made to look like chain links. I'm glad you guys can see my uh, emails. Okay, these, uh, this one is made to look like uh, chain link, or not chain link, but chains. And in fact, the name of the typeface is chain. And uh, this preview lets us know what the letters look like. I think it's kind of ugly, but really simple. Decorative is anything that doesn't fit in the formal families. Decorative is kind of like uh, those relatives. You know they exist, but um, we don't really talk about them um, unless they do something really cool. And so that's kind of uh, uh, where decorative fits in. Now, decorative typefaces are used mostly, they're used mostly in headlines. Imagine reading a book in this typeface. What a nightmare. Um, it would be very hard for a beginning uh, reader to uh, understand the symbols clearly because of all the extra shapes. It's not clean. Um, the baseline is disguised because there's no serifs and so on. Now some designers will use um, pre-existing typefaces and fonts and make adjustments to them to create a new typeface or a new font that is decorative. Um, but uh, for the most part, this is, this is what decorative is. Now, within the decorative family, we have cursive and script typefaces. Now, in grade school, when you learned cursive writing, you learned to write like this, right? Where all of your letters are connected. But in the world of topography, cursive is not connected. Your letters are not connected in design um, or in the typeface. Script letters are connected as if you were writing um, uh, with a calligraphy pen. Okay. Calligraphy. Okay. Cursive mimics handwriting. If I could spell. Mimics handwriting. Okay. So <clears throat> it's really easy to get these backwards, but just remember that cursive is not connected script is connected the main thing you need to know though is that both of these qualify as decorative All right really simple now can you guys looking at this identify what each typeface family is you will be taking a quiz in canvas on this i'm not going to go through 
and tell you the answers, but you'll see here this looks awfully familiar with some other slides. I'm not going to go into further detail than that. Uh, but you should be able to easily identify based on those tips that I gave you. Thick um, brackets and serifs. No serifs. Thin serifs that are longer and squared off. Hairline serifs and thick slabs of serifs with smaller brackets. Now, <clears throat> you will be making a short slide presentation also. This, is, this will be an assignment in Canvas. You'll have six slides. You'll create six slides. On each slide, you'll put a wordmark logo. Now, a wordmark logo is a logo that uses words, okay? nothing else, no images. If it uses images, it is a graphic logo. Nike is a graphic logo because of the swoosh. Domino's graphic because of the domino. Okay? Tiffany's is only a word mark, right? H and M. Even though it's initials, it's not an actual word. It is still a word mark. So you will find only word mark logos. You will place one per slide. And on that slide, you will need to identify what typeface family that company used for their logo and how you decided that. What makes it a sans serif, a slab serif, a transitional, or modern, or decorative, whatever the typeface family might be. So, really quickly, we look here at Tiffany and Company. All right? I see extreme contrast. So, what is that contrast, or what is that typeface family? based on the extreme contrast between thick and thin. It's kind of hard to tell, but there are serifs, and they are hairline serifs. Okay. So I've given you all the clues. What is that typeface family? Look at five guys. Big, thick letters. It's written in bold. All right. Burgers and fries is a different typeface family. So. Typically, in a logo, you wouldn't use two different logos or two different typefaces. But if we're looking at just five guys, it doesn't have any serifs. It is without serif. Okay? Look at Google. Same idea as five guys. It's a different typeface, but it is the same family. You'll notice there are no serifs. FedEx fits in the same category. West Elm, look at that little hook at the top of the L. That is not a serif. If you look everywhere else on the letter forms, there are no serifs. Now, if we come here to Sony, look at those serifs. Okay? They're thick serifs, very slab-like. Okay? Bed, Bath, and Beyond fits into these to the category here. Now look at H&M. It is not connected, but it looks like a handwritten uh, letter form. So what um, typeface family would that be? Now if we come over here to Nike, that fits into that category. Uh, switch fix or stitch fix. It has thicker serifs and it has thicker brackets on it. Domino's, no serifs. Stonewall Kitchen has uh, short serifs and thick brackets. Instagram, the letters, the letter forms are connected. It looks handwritten. Target, it does not have any serifs. Okay. So 
you'll need to go through and on each of those logos, remember only one logo per slide page, you will need to tell me what the uh, typeface family is and what uh, your reason is for selecting uh, that family just like I've been uh, asking questions for. Now these logos in this example here are off limits. If I see any of these logos you will receive a zero as if you did not do that slide. Each slide will be worth three points. Okay, One for the logo, one for the family, come on, one for the family, and one for your explanation. Very important. Logo, family, explanation. If you don't have all three parts, your assignment is incomplete and it will receive a zero. Okay? Last but not least, if you want additional information to understand typography better, I'm not talking about reading this in your spare time. Uh, I'm just suggesting that if my video has not explained it for you in a way that uh, makes sense. All of this information that I have shown you is found at designingwithtype.com forward slash five forward slash home dot php. Uh, you can go there. I wish I could just have a link and you could click on it, but I don't have that. But you can go there and there are some exercises, other exercises that you can do. You can see what designers are doing um, uh, with type to create some very uh, cool and interesting uh, designs. I hope all of that makes sense. And if you have further questions, please don't hesitate to contact me in Canvas. Uh, or to comment on the discussion board. Thanks, and we'll talk to you later. All right, the next typeface family I want to talk to you about is transitional. Transitional has a lot of features uh, similar to old style, except for if you look closely here, you will notice right tool, you will notice that the serifs are squared off. Okay. Uh, you'll also see your terminals are a little bit smaller here on the Y and on the G. We have the ears on the G, but the terminals on the Y are a little smaller. Uh, and then you'll also see that the serifs are a little longer, but the brackets are shorter. <clears throat> so, like with transitional, things to remember are that uh, you have serifs. And these serifs are longer thinner, thinner, and then you also have smaller brackets. Uh, and then there is um, little to no oblique. All right. So if we look here on the G, I could draw it straight. You'll notice that 
on the inside, that those thinnest parts are nearly vertical. Okay? Whereas with old style, you can see that it was uh, more uh, defined. It was, a, it was uh, um, not quite a steep a, an angle. Um, a lot of transitionals don't have any obliqueness. It's, uh, the thin parts are uh, directly above and below each other. Okay. Now, the next type face is modern. And you'll notice here in modern typeface, you still have a serif. So we still have serifs. They are thin hairlines. Oops. Let me back up. Thin hairline. And no brackets. The other thing you'll see is you have a high contrast. High contrast from thick to thin and your strokes. So you'll see here thick on the stem of the H and then as we come around that top of the H or uh, I can't remember what it's called, shoulder of the H is really thin. It's hairline, just like the uh, serifs. Okay. If we go back here to transitional, we have um, medium contrast. Between thick and thin. And then on old style, you'll see that, yes, it's thinner, but they refer to it as low contrast. Now, there are uh, typeface families that have no contrast between thick and thin. We'll talk about those a little later. But uh, like here on the E, see how thin that is? Whereas on, uh, in old style, the E is, is thicker. And then in modern, that's just a hairline. Okay? But the biggest telltale sign on uh, modern uh, typeface families is there are no brackets. No brackets, and it is a high contrast from thick and thin. Okay. Now, our next family is slab serif, or it's also called Egyptian. I'm not sure why they refer to it as Egyptian, but slab serif is really easy to identify because the serifs are thick. So Number one rule, thick serifs like slabs, okay? like a slab of concrete. Right? Uh, most of your, in fact, all of your Western style fonts, uh, those are slab serif fonts. Uh, the other thing that you're going to find with uh, slab serif is uh, low contrast. Low or no contrast. And, um, and then you have, uh, so you have Thick serifs, but you have small brackets. Those three things are going to help you identify your serifs.